But I knew I still needed some help because, you know, it's hard to figure it all out by myself. So I went to this adult education center at the University and got a certificate, and that's is where I met Lisa. And then I, because I'm old, I read books. Maybe your folks read books, your grandparents. So I read all these books, and I started following people's blogs. I mean, I mean probably that's true for a lot of you. The social media sites you use, a lot of that is self-taught, right? So because I kind of live and read this stuff, then I've learned some tips and tricks that people actually pay me an hourly rate to help them. And LinkedIn, I call it like age agnostic, meaning you may be swift on your Snapchat, your Twitter, your Instagram, you probably have done Facebook, right? But you maybe don't know LinkedIn so well. So that's why I'm here to give you some tips for using it now and after you graduate. Um, and then we'll get into Facebook business pages because then the people here work for a business and if you're expected help with the social media, they might have Facebook business pages, then you'll know about them. Or even just as a consumer, you'll know what they're about. So I hope that makes sense in terms of the flow. So anything else I should know for starters? Which they're sending somebody over from tech okay. to help us. But would you say your name and the name of the company again for oh, yes, the right. camera for the, the online? Oh yeah, those are the online people and I realize I've got to get up on uh, I gotta get myself up onto my site. Yes, so online camera people. Hello, online people. I, I have great feedback from them. They're such helpful. And you too, please, when you write, be honest. Be harsh, you know, be kind, but be direct, because I change up these classes based on the feedback I get. So Joyce Royce from Boomer Social Media Tutor, and I just need to get up on my um, on my LinkedIn and then on my Facebook. So that's so again, that's we're gonna start with LinkedIn. So I have that handout in front of you. This is coming up. And then Facebook will come up. So you have to see all the behind the scenes stuff, which is kind of fun. Yes. So, so the thing with LinkedIn and Facebook, there's a lot of parallels between them in terms of connecting with people, having news feed, um, being able to communicate with each other privately, kind of staying in touch, knowing kind of what's happening in people's lives. But they, they are different in that LinkedIn is completely business focused, completely. So I wanted to start with that because I think um, even though you maybe have done Facebook, you maybe were on it once upon a time like when you were in high school or middle school or something. So let's, we're going to start with LinkedIn and we'll just sort of talk through this until we get the tech going. So the reasons to, oh, first of all, I'm holding a little bit. I know Danielle's on LinkedIn. Rachel thinks she is. She is. <laughs> She's got to double check her email. Is there anybody else that already at least has a LinkedIn account? Oh, this is awesome. Really good. Really good. That's nice to hear. So, and I know it's a little bit trickier, especially people from like another country where you, I don't know, do they even let, is LinkedIn allowed in your, in where you're from originally? I don't know. Looking at people. Maybe you're all from the USA, you know, I don't know. But just in case somebody, because I've had that where Facebook might not be, so I respect those differences. So these are going to be, you know, USA approach, so here we are. Right, half, about half the class is um, originally from China, okay, and so they don't have the same access we do. That's what I thought. But they do when they're here. Good, okay. I believe. So, take advantage of it, right? Jump on it. Go the American way for this okay. social media thing, you know, keep your roots. You should be. You went from Wisconsin, and someone said, as feedback was an online student said, and Joyce with her thick Wisconsin accent. And I was actually kind of excited to hear that because I've lived here for 24 years and I thought it kind of modified. But if you do know anybody from the upper Midwest, that's why I speak like that. Just the truth. So I'm, I am from this country, but a different part of it. So LinkedIn is really about your brand. Now this is a writing class, right? So a lot of writing is helping you find your voice. And your voice is part of your brand. Now my brand is very how-to. Here is how you do it. All my blogs are typically that way. The teacher, and I trained to be a teacher a long time ago, like Lisa was a teacher only for much longer than I ever was. So for me, doing this kind of work is so satisfying because I like to help people learn things. Also, when you're involved with LinkedIn and you start to look for jobs, then you're going to be more apt to come up higher in a search on LinkedIn or in the internet in general. You know, one of the best part about LinkedIn is to be in touch with each other. 
So those of you on LinkedIn, if you haven't LinkedIn with, with Lisa, you should. I mean, ask her to be your connection. Ask each other to be connections. It's a great way to stay in touch after this class is over. You may never see some of these people ever again. It's possible. You know, it's a pretty big campus. So this way, you have the semester together, and you form bonds, you learn from each other. And LinkedIn is a great way to keep that bond. I mean, heck, you may already do Instagram, Twitter, maybe Facebook with each other. That's cool, too. But LinkedIn is great because as they, maybe they go to work for a company, and you get a notification of that, and you think, I've been wanting to go to work for that company. See, so already you might have kind of a foot in the door with a former classmate. And if people who are trying to find employees, recruiters, they will find people on LinkedIn. I sat with a guy just yesterday, graduated from Arizona State University this year, and he was recruited to his job in a financial planning firm through LinkedIn. There's no figure. So it happens. I mean, he's like a contemporary of yours, and the guy, the local guy from, I think, Smoky Hill from the World High School. So on LinkedIn, just to also clarify how it's different from Facebook, your LinkedIn profile really is your business presence. So you can talk about your soccer team, you can talk about hobbies, you can talk about things to the extent you feel comfortable doing it, but there, whereas with Facebook, you have a personal account, and that may just be for you and your friends and family, right? And then a business page is where, say, anybody here have a business of their own or work for a business? Part time, we have that. And what's your name? Maria. Maria, okay. What kind of company is that? Um, my family owns formal wear. Okay. Yeah, formal wear would most likely have a Facebook business page. Yeah. So she would be involved in that, where she then, that's completely separate from what Maria does on her. Um, let me get your hand up. She's our tech savior. You're here to help us. Yeah. Yes, yay. So that's where Facebook comes in. So you have a business presence through this business page. Whereas on LinkedIn, there are company pages. UCD has a company page, I imagine. We're going to look at their Facebook page here before the end of the hour. But, it, but you focus on your own personal profile, they call it. That's your business presence, is what you, because it's a people to people kind of thing on LinkedIn. So, oh, yay, we flipped off. I'm telling you, I'm excited. I remember when we landed on the moon, you know, it was a long time before a lot of you guys were born, right? So, at any rate, are you ready? Can everybody see okay? We can't get, we've asked them multiple times to adjust the ca camera, but nobody uh, seems to be able to do it. Well, we, I think we're good, though. What's your name? Oh, oh, Brianna. Yeah, Brianna. Thank you, Brianna. All right. Okay, so now, everybody got your LinkedIn handout? And, you know, for folks online, um, I'll send it to them. You'll send it to them. Okay. So now, I want to, I'm sorry, I'm not making this best to do like that. So, what I want to do is first, because Danielle is being so sweet, to let us look at her. Um, oh, right? Like right colored, right? Wow. That's not you. Okay, Los Angeles. That's not you. I just look right Okay. But it was a student. That's why I kind of was interested. All right, let's try again. So, Danielle. Oh, and this is a trick to do. I should have done this. Watch carefully. So, what I want to do is go here. And now we're going to see. We might have to put Denver in. Um, and this is actually a good exercise in um, searching. And if it takes too long, you know, we'll just get this. But you're, you would be listed in the grid. You're from here, Danielle? Okay. And let's see if we can keep going. Mm -hmm. Oh, there I am. Okay. Uh, student at University of Colorado. Okay, excellent. And that's great you said that. If you say, well, Joyce, I don't have a job. Well, going to college is your job. You probably hear from that from your parents every day. You know, go to work, get good grades, and go to school, show up. So let's, that is a fabulous picture, Daniel. Even though your hair is a little different now, it still looks like you. It's nice on your pictures. Yeah, I think that works. And then when you graduate college, and you get another senior picture. 
right? That would be a nice thing to ask for. But that looks enough on you. So here she is on LinkedIn. So she's just got basically gotten started, and there is her employer, essentially your place. That, see, she's listed. See what happens if you list education and no job, then it'll just list your education. So that's fine if you don't have, because some of you may not have jobs, you know, you know, outside of being a student. If you have a company you work for, it will and you will it will list as well as your um, university. And also, what she lists Anglewood, where she lives. A lot of times, I say list uh, your greater Denver metro area. So now we found her there. Rachel, let's see if we can just find you really quick and look you up. How do you spell your last name? Uh, so it's R E C H A E L. R E. Or for my oh, first, first name, I'm sorry. A E L. Yeah. R E. Or R I C H. A E L. A E L, and then for my last name, uh, E T C H. E T. C H. A R T. Oh, I can spell right. H A R T. H R. Yep. What a great name. Don't <laughs> ever change your name. Yeah, I know it's rare. Okay, so I guess I'm not finding. Yeah, you. I don't. It, maybe. That's okay. So what we'll do is we'll okay. just use mine. You know, just to kind of go through the profile. So we're going to really focus almost entirely on the profile. So in your profile, you have a lot of different sections, and I'm just going to start with them on slide four, and just go through them one at a time. So first off is your profile photo. We saw Danielle had a great photo. It doesn't have to be a professionally taken photo like her high school senior picture, but it should be something that if you were to show up for a job interview, you would look like. So it would be a little more formal than what most of you are wearing now, but it, it just could be a nice top like this. It doesn't have to be a suit for guys or a tie. Heck no, not in Colorado. No way. But just something like, you know, what Lisa's wearing could more, just something that you would wear. Kind of, business look. And then here you don't need a background photo, but like I expect if you you were trying to PR your company's formal wear, you could have a visual for that even if you wanted to in the background picture. But that's more for Facebook, I think. Or Instagram and some of the others. So then going down, you have your name. So say if one of you got married or divorced or have a nickname, you want to have like a maiden name, you can add that or a former name if you got divorced, or a nickname, so you have all that in the, in the name field. You do all that editing here. So in Danielle, for example, if you wanted to put greater gender instead of Englewood, you would do it here in this location, in the location field, because it picked it up by your zip code. That's why I gave you Englewood. And then the headline, it doesn't have to be nearly this long. It could just be like she has, student at the University of uh, Colorado, Denver, so you could have that. And then if you have anything else, maybe your major, your field you're in, you could add that to your headline. So the headline doesn't have to be long, but I like to use, see these little what, separators, these lines in between? That's called a pipe key. And it's a key right above the entry key. So it's, it's handy because if you know that, because that's, I did that on this um, It's handy because it separates the sections of your headline really well. And the reason you saw that 24, um, that little warning, is I made my headline longer by going onto the mobile app. So if you're using LinkedIn, I highly suggest you add it as an app to your phone because you will find it handy if you're out again meeting students here and networking in any way, even at a family gathering, you know, your aunt, your uncle, your neighbor. They would be, I think, probably impressed. You said, oh, I was got involved in LinkedIn. A lady came to our class and told us about it. And could we be on LinkedIn? Maybe they're in a the field that you're in, too, or that you want to go into. So you can add, you can make your headline longer on the app. That's where I was going with that. So now going down, oh, and by the way, anybody here in like an IT type field or any field that has certifications, certificates, what, what are you in? Uh, so my major is communications, but there's not like a um, there's not like an official major for strategic communications, so I'm doing certificate for that. Oh, very smart, very smart. Good to do that while you're here, even if it takes you another semester or whatever it might, because then that then I'll show you where you can add that. I mean, you may have some letters here. Is it Mina? Mina. 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 So Mina 
when she gets those letters, she put them after her last name, right here by where I voiced it. So she would add it right after that. So that's where you would add any, any type of certification at all. Then there's another section where you can put it in. So now then we're going down into contact information. Oh, I'm going to skip it. Now contact information, what is that? That's the section where you have information about yourself. Now for this you won't have that much information probably at this stage in life, but you would have an email, so if we go down further, so you have some email that you set up with your LinkedIn. And maybe you want to use a different email. You know, so maybe you have a Gmail for your personal line, and then maybe you have a Gmail even for school, for school you have an EDU, I guess. But you could have a separate Gmail you would put, say, on the resume. So whatever you put on a resume, that's a good email then to use on LinkedIn. So you can have more than one email connected to your LinkedIn, and then one of them is a display and one of the primary one. But I want to mention the phone number, because several students brought this up last time, and they were glad I talked about it. So you know what? Who, I mean, who wants to give out their personal cell number? I mean, not any more than necessary, right? But there's something called Google Voice, and it's mentioned in your handout, or jot that down. So Google, like the search engine, Google Voice, V-O-I-C-E. If you go on there, it's free. And you can get a phone number that becomes associated with your personal cell number. So just like you have that Gmail that we, I was just mentioning, that's just for, say, a resume, or maybe for school or other professional reasons, that you would use that and you have your separate personal uh, Gmail, then this is the same concept. You would have this, this phone number that when people call you, it actually rolls into Gmail and you get this cool little message through Gmail. You can listen to a recording. It's pretty neat. So it's almost like the secretary say, Lisa, she called me the other day. She called me yesterday on I-720, my, my Google Voice number. And it, it's like it says, Lisa is on the phone. Now, if I didn't want to talk to Lisa, I would let her roll into voicemail. But there she was. It's, like, it's sort of like a, a clear, it is like in the olden days, like a secretary. That's the best comparison. I've ever heard of those. So that's what you can have. And another thing you can do, if you want, is to customize your LinkedIn profile. And you're saying, oh, really, Joyce? That seems kind of silly. But actually, it shows that you're starting to know how to brand yourself. We already started talking about that. So here we are. I'm going to go back to contact info. So we're just here. I don't want to go too fast. OK, so contact info. And then click on the pencil. You always do pencil to do editing. So up here. Probably for anybody, a handful of you are on your maybe on your LinkedIn now or on your computer creating an account. So you go here, and now you can click on that, and, and up here is where you update in the top right, is where you can put specifically. So at least if you have like Lisa Dickstein, UCD instructor. I mean, that's not your only hat, but she could brand that way if she wanted to. Or writer and author or whatever. You have about 30 characters, a little over 30 characters. So you could have your first name, your last name, and your UCD student. Probably there's no one else that has it unless you have a really common name, because I know it's, it's a big person. But like Rachel, I think you're okay. Uh -huh. Danielle, maybe there might be others. Um, so I think like uh, Nina, that, that would be. What's your last name? Lorenz. Lorenz, okay. Yeah, so that's a, especially your first name. You're probably, you could probably just get by with just your first and last name. So at any rate, that, and one other thing I wanted to show you, I ran into this yesterday. If you, while you're in the screen, scroll down and make sure that this says public. This client I had yesterday, she had only her network. She only had like, well, maybe about 200 connections. So that meant that there weren't that many people who could actually um, see her profile if they were searching, like in the Google search. So you can link to everything you put there. It shouldn't be a secret or anything. It should be public information, so make sure the public can see it. So now in terms of the summary, the summary, now we're at the page two, slide seven, just to help us here. The summary is really a story about you. Now you don't have to go into a lot of detail. I would suggest that you just talk, talk to the student here, talk to your parents, talk to a friend. Tell them about yourself. Tell them about your major. Like, so what was your first name again? Abby. Abby, what's your field you're going into? Mass uh, Media Marketing. Mass Media Marketing. So Abby could talk about her interest in Mass Media Marketing. Did she get involved in high school? 
did you, were you in any like extracurricular groups? Had you always been somebody who just was fascinated by the mass media and the changes? Even the term mass media is almost outdated. Mm -hmm. Frankly, I mean, they should get their act together, <laughs> maybe re re rename it or something. But so that would be how you got into this, and perhaps what kind of a job you'd like to land, and after after you graduate. So you're painting a bit of a picture, and you can even have listen to this, folks, a testimonial. You know, when you apply for a job, they'll ask for like a reference, and sometimes they'll even ask for a personal reference, like maybe um, who would be a good example if you were person in a faith community, you could be your, a pastor or a rabbi or the leader of some other faith community. It could be someone that you volunteered, like you say Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, something like, I mean, Boys and Girls Clubs. So anybody that knows you, kind of your personal, your overall character, how you approach life, your integrity, that would be a good person to write maybe a, a paragraph, three or three sentences, and you can add that with their permission, of course to your summary. And there's a term you may have already heard called social proof. And social proof is when somebody publicly through social media says something about you that you've already said about yourself and essentially validates it. So I can say all these things, all kinds of things that maybe I just made up. But if that person says this thing about me, it has a certain um, ring to it, like credibility, like Joyce really does do that. So think about who would do that for you. I mean, an, uh, an instructor. Are you allowed to write those, Lisa? Yes, after okay. um, they're not after in my class semester. anymore. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I have, in fact, I'm working on a grad student recommendation for a former student right now. Wow. See, there you go. Excellent. So that's be a good resource. So going down, so I don't want to take too much time with any of this. It's just kind of an overview today. And you can include, again, your email here. You can put in. Let's say you've done a project in school, a paper, and maybe there's a way to take the concepts of that paper and put it into a PowerPoint, and maybe Prezi, and if you use that here at school, that's a cool slide program. And you could do that and then have that be connected to your LinkedIn profile. You could connect it here or where you list yourself as a student or with a job, and even a video. If you have a YouTube channel, something you're doing on YouTube, like that's where these are from, you can add those. It really makes your profile more interesting, frankly. So now down in here is really kind of the resume aspect of LinkedIn. So I think of many ways LinkedIn is kind of like a resume on steroids because you can put more things into it than just in a standard paper resume. They say keep it one page or maybe one page back to back at the top. But on LinkedIn, you can just have it include so much more. So, um, and what's brought up too when I was reading these reviews from last time, but well, wait a minute, I haven't worked that much. How do I make my LinkedIn experience section really meaningful? Well, hopefully in high school, you had some involvement in key club, or maybe you had a part-time job then. If you were a, a captain of a sports team, who knows, or you were a member of a sports team. Could be so many things. And it is, sounds crazy, but I would list those as a quote unquote job, as a position. You showed up, you came to practice, you came to the games, you were there for whatever activity, you were in the plays, you know, whatever it was that you committed to when you were there. So I think, especially at this stage in life, where you know most of you are pretty young, that would be worth doing. I mean, down the road, when you're older, then probably that's not as relevant. So is that making sense to people that you might want to, you know, just. Be open to think about what you can do. It doesn't have to be just a traditional job. And so one other thing, too, when you add uh, anything at all to this section, and you've got a nice uh, headline going, see here where it says update my headline? You want to uncheck that box. Make sure to uncheck that box. Just make a little note there. I don't know if I have that on the slide. Since this is pretty straightforward, I'm just going to scroll down now to education. So I was reading on the UCD Facebook page last night that 50% of people that come here are transfer students. So I'm curious, how many in this class transferred from someplace else? Okay, not quite 50%, interesting. So very cool. So therefore, you went to another college, you want to put that college in too, why not, right? So say you put it in, then you just list this college. So, or whatever other college is. 
Now, you know, you're kind of young for this, but someday if you ever take just like, maybe you take a certificate program, wherever, and then like say you take it at, at I don't know, wherever, DU or something, but you'd rather have your UCD dis um, display, anything in this education section can be moved up and down. And in fact, oh, ladies and gentlemen, up here, in this section, let me find a better way to show you. Let's say you have a part-time job at McDonald's. But then you also, our students, that's more important than the part-time job at McDonald's. So anything you're currently doing here in experience, again, you can move these up and down. With that little, it's kind of confusing because that little, those lines, they don't appear at all until you hover over them. There's a lot of that on social media. It's so annoying. So just make a note you can move these guys around. Anything present, anything education. So now we're down to, and this, and Nina, pay attention here with your certificate. So once you have that certificate, you can add it. Even before you have your degree, you got your certificate, let's say. Well, you might get it at the same time. So you add it to that section. So that's that would be a great example of somebody who's got a certificate program. She can add it. And then volunteer experience, you could one thing more or less cross-list your leadership roles and the work experience part with volunteer. Or maybe you show it up and you, once a month you show up on know there's a place over by Civic Center where they feed um, homeless people, I think every Friday, or maybe it's every day, right? So I, there's a lady I know from the church, her church goes there I think every Friday. So if you do things like that, if you do things out of the goodness of your heart that are just basic volunteer things, I may mention that. Because people will be so happy to see your generosity and how you're not just about going to school and maybe working, but you take time out of your lives to give back to your community. And I know people in your age group really want to do that. They just don't want to be signed up to do it every Saturday morning or something. You want to do it kind of on your time, you know, have a tap for humanity, build a house or something, you know, not do something for a while. Okay, so next. I just want to stop and see if there's any questions before we go into endorsements and recommendations. Anybody have any questions? I mean, sometimes it's kind of hard when you have, I don't know what to ask, but do reach out to me afterwards, please. Okay, now a couple more things. You know, remember I already talked about getting a testimonial, like Lisa can do that for you after the semester. So here's other ways that you can ask for people to give you that social proof. And one is called skills and endorsements. So you can add skills up to 50, that's five zero. 50 skills to the section, and a lot of times people will just naturally, it will just endorse you. But perhaps you're not getting any endorsements, so then you wanna email people who you're connected to. We'll get to that here in a minute or two. You have to be connected to them on LinkedIn, like a Facebook brand, your personal connection, and then they can endorse you for a skill. You have to, you have to email them, send them the URL for your profile, and say, please go in and endorse me for a skill. Just click on how you endorse somebody is you just, I'll just show you, we'll go to Lisa's. We'll pick on her. Right? So say I want to endorse Lisa. So there's her writing business. So now I'm going to go down to her skills. Here we go. And see, I've already endorsed her for these three. That's why there's a check there. But let's see if I can endorse her for some other things I should. So I could endorse her for, what else? Well, higher education, hello. No, and watch this, I'm glad I did this. This is an annoying, so annoying thing LinkedIn does. All of a sudden he gets all nosy. Like how good is Lisa at higher education? How do you know about her higher education skills? S excuse my language, but screw it. Just click on that X and now you're done. Because, you know what, if you fill that out, it doesn't benefit Lisa one bit. So it's just LinkedIn being nosy trying to gather more. So, just wanted to give you a warning. So now I put your, and I can proofread editing, she tells all these things. So that's, so that's her skills. And then, well, that is her recommendations. Well, oh my gosh, we didn't even plan this. But here, I'm just gonna read this nice recommendation. Lisa does an amazing job as an editor. Not only does she have a keen eye for detail, she knows how to be efficient and effective with a written word. And I told her so that she did such a fine job. She's been an editor ever since. So that was written a long time ago, and it's interesting that it shows up first, because I didn't think you could make them do that. Lisa, do you know about that? I mean, how interesting. Unless all your other stuff is from before that. Ah, you've not been out asking me. Don't, you actually don't mess with that. Just keep my great recommendation. <laughs> so at any rate, 
So how you ask for a recommendation, see I wanted to ask Lisa to recommend me, and I think she already has, but they can recommend you for all different things. So let's pretend for a minute that Lisa, now we're still on like slide 14, Lisa and I, or I climb right in here, I so. I go up to the top, I click on more, and I'm going to request a recommendation. So this time I'll say, well let's say we're on a board together. So we worked in the same group. And my group at that time was um, this group. So see, now I picked that. That's what I was saying about if you have your volunteer work listed, your leadership roles there, and work, that's how you can get a recommendation. And then now I would ask her if this, this is not a real thing. So you see, just to review how we did this, you would go to her after semester, click here, go down to request the recommendation, the relationship was she was, you know, whatever the professor in there might be. I think there's all kinds of things. She essentially mentored you, even I didn't know. Okay, so that's, so now I'm going to move over to connections. So any other questions about um, profiles? I want to make sure we get out of 12.05. 12.15. 12.15, cool, we're out of the track then. So, now, what is social media without people? Otherwise, it'd just be a website, right? I mean, boring, boring, boring. That's so less like century, literally, right? So social media is about people connecting with each other and exchanging ideas and learning from each other and, and giving each other social proof and endorsing and recommending and all that jazz. So now I want to have connections. So what I want to show you is up here in my network, and I suggest, by the way, go to your computer. So you have your computer up. So don't, on your phone, here's why I suggest going to your computer. I have these two people, there's Taylor. Isn't it? Where's Taylor? Okay, hey, so that's the, oh great. So now she's here. I know. I, I already like her. Right? So I'm gonna accept her. I don't even have to look at you. But actually, do you mind if you look at yours? Sure. You'll be. It's okay. You don't have to. Okay. So, so we'll just briefly look at hers for another example. So I think that can be better. I'm suddenly getting to like nothing. Where? No, I don't know. Okay. You know what? We'll just have to just. I think we just had a temporary power shortage or something. Well, see how it's like really slow? Here we go. So Taylor, here we go. So Taylor, nice picture. Really nice. See how she did that already? Oh, I love it when people are stepping at me. See, she has visual merchandiser, space, pipe key, digital media, space, pipe key, communication space. So creator. Creator is what people say now more than writer. So often use a content creator would be another term. That's what you're all learning about here. And then she talks about herself there. 37 followers. So she's, yeah, she's got a really good start here. This is really nice. Excellent. So now I'm going to accept him. But now this other dude, I'm not so sure. I mean, I get a lot of people that want to connect, and I'm like, I'm not sure. Again, it's just being a little slow. I'm sorry. So there's a way, and that's why I'm stressing the computer, okay, that you can ask this person why they reached out to you. So, okay, so now we're upset with her. So I'm going back, let me just take me back to where I was. Um, here and then there. So I, I can write a note to this other gentleman, to this gentleman, Sean. And I can say, after I look at his profile, maybe see if we have some shared connections, then I would say, so no, just take it too long. Um, I would say, hey, Sean, Thanks for reaching out to me. What prompted you? Or thanks for your invite, Sean. What prompted you to reach out to me? What prompted you to reach out to me? Some oh, one person thought that was a little pushy, but I, I kind of think something along those lines is very direct, but it doesn't say why. I think sometimes when you say why, that can put people out of the defensive. But I'm just curious, what prompted you to reach out to me? And then we'll see if he writes back or not. Sometimes if they look, I'll call them promising enough then I will go ahead and accept them. And a nice touch, too, is create a little, kind of maybe one or two short paragraphs, perhaps in a Word document, that after you connect with someone, you can send it back to them and say, thanks so much. I'm in this field, mass communications. I always want to stay in touch. Looking for internships for next summer uh, in 2020. If anything comes along, just let me know. Here's the best email to reach me at. Something, something like that, so that it kind of closes the loop and, it, uh, instead of just accepting it, I think, I think it's just a, a little nicety 
and it'll set you apart you know, from just the other random person. In fact, one more cool trick I want to show here. I think I'll just use Danielle, even though we found her already. So if I go on here, see if I can find it. Danielle, right? I should find you because if I looked on my computer, then Picture. Oh, it's got the black. Right. Oh, shoot. Oh, no, I'm not finding you again. Well, I may have to just use some other person for a sake of example. So I'll just use this other. So I'm just going to use her, just I'm not going to actually send it to her. So I have her up here. So I found her on my, on my phone, right on the LinkedIn app. So, oh, that's the best example. Let me get a second. This other Daniel, right? So, what it says, the first thing, this is important, I should have mentioned the second level. It says second level. What does that mean? That means me, I'm connected. Oh, here it is. Carol Knapp is here in Denver. And Carol Knapp somehow knows this other Daniel right in Los Angeles. So, that means Danielle, this other Daniel and I share a connection. So, it makes her second. So let's pretend this Daniel Wright was connected to this other Daniel right here. She would be a third. So that's what it means. One, two, three. It's sort of like six degrees of seven Kevin Bacon. I'm not even still talking about that. So now it says connect. One is tempted to just click on connect. But no, if you click on more, click on more, now you'll see personalize your invite. And I know it feels like really joyous. Why bother? But especially for someone older, I mean older, let's say over 45 or 50, they especially might appreciate a little note. It's just being respectful, I think. And as opposed to just like this Sean guy, who Lord knows who he is, just sends me this random request. Because the LinkedIn function is different than Twitter, Instagram, all these others. That's just fine to go ahead and follow people there. Because that's the culture. The LinkedIn, I think it'll show that you are just a little more serious and a little more professional if you do that. So when you get your LinkedIn going, or do it later, feel free to all my cards, feel free to, um, yeah, feel free to reach out. So I'm going to switch over to Facebook, unless we have questions, because I just want to make sure I won't miss anything. And the advice, again, of, um, that I got from the previous class, I'm actually going to start with a couple of business pages that are pretty sharp pages. Now, if you're ever on Facebook, now you're on your other hand. And it was obviously right there, but last time my daughter couldn't find it. So if we're looking for a page, you're going to click on the page. So here is the Facebook page for your very own campus. And I find this so officious. Let me so not officious. Auspicious. A-U-S-P-I-C-I-O-U-S. That I would be so blessed to be here today when your own, is she called a chancellor? Yes. Dorothy I actually know her from years ago, from over 20 years ago. She was at Red Rocks for a while. She ran Red Rocks College. She is getting a talk on the state of your campus today. So that's why she gets such top billing in the cover book. I'm sure they changed that out. And so then here's appropriately the logo. But I love, watch this, that instead of, instead of saying like, oh, email us or something, we can watch a video about, you know, I'm not going to put some now, but there is like just like a 25 second video about your campus. You might recognize some of these places. It has over 3,000 views. 3,000 views, which is, I think, not too shabby. It's pretty good. And videos, those of you involved with this field will know how valuable they are in terms of telling a story and getting people's attention. So that's the video they have to introduce the viewer to UCD. And then going back to the page itself, I just want to show you a few other things before I get into creating a Facebook business page. So first I want to look at the about section. I love the about section. So here it talks about, let's see, I'm not sure why they keep that picture. Oh, so annoying. But you can see it a little bit here. See down here, no one doesn't do that. Oh, so navigation issues. See how it has the mission, diverse teaching and learning community, applies the health and well-being in Colorado started. Actually, it started in 1964, but it became CU Denver under that name 
1973, around the time this Agraria campus was being constructed. So that's it's interesting to know about the history a little bit. And I also find it cool that see because of this, your students, you're on Instagram, you're on Twitter. So see where it says follow us. So they this is an app where they've connected the Facebook business page over to the campus's Twitter account. Makes sense, right? Maybe you'd much rather, frankly, be involved in the campus through Twitter than you would through his Facebook business page. Or similarly, through Instagram. So then now we have, and there they have, looks like 14,000 uh, followers. So I think that's pretty cool. The other thing I wanted to say that I loved about just poking around on this page, here's where I found out about the transfer students. See this? About 50%. So that's right out of your news service here on the campus. Some events that are coming up. The best place is to have coffee. You see your coffee drinker when you're looking for ideas? I think that's cool. But this, who here was on the campus two weeks ago Thursday when it was all that snow? Who here came to school? Wow. Hats off to all of you. Hats off to all of you. Because I would have gone out, but my husband said the roads are bad. I told him if I can make it, they can make it. Yeah. None of them has to drive down the side of a mountain to get here. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking about for you. So look at this video. Look at this video, guys. For those of you that weren't here, this looks like Wisconsin, where I'm from, where they have real winter, as I call it. Here, look how many, what's this used to be winter? Anybody here from the Midwest ever? Like if you visited the Midwest in the winter? You don't go too often. No, right? <laughs> so I, and look at this one. This has more views and 51 shares, look at that, than anything else they put up. This little video of the, of the snowstorm. So sometimes it, it doesn't have to be anything about the campus per se, but just kind of a day in the life type of thing. So does that make sense? So that, I thought you'd enjoy that page thing because it's your own people. And then the other page I wanted to show you is Starbucks. And I'm going to start doing that. So Starbucks has an incredible page. They have a lot of different pages. So here is, I'll call it like their main page. For example, there. Standard logo, this is a current cover photo. And notice here, instead of a video, they would you could send them a message to the page if you want to communicate with them. Now here's something I was sort of thrown at first, when I said, wait a minute, September 30th? I mean, it's almost the end of October. But then, look at this, see this little blue um, square? You know how on a bulletin board you have a push pin, right? You still use those things. Uh, like when I was in college. So what they want is they want this pumpkin spice latte, which I think, what is all that they do about that? But it apparently is a big deal. So they want to focus that, maybe for a whole month of October. So that's what they've done here. And just look at that, all like almost a thousand comments of just on this pumpkin spice latte, I mean, really? But it's a big thing for Starbucks lovers, right? And then all these other ones, look how cute they are. They're just, so lively, it's actually better to go this way. Look at one of their posts. So you can see, I mean, they probably a lot of people are working at Starbucks, getting all these posts out and responding to comments and stuff. But anyway, it's just very lively and fun. So I just thought I'd mention this. It's something they did in the school. They spread words of kindness. Look at this. Check your cup slate to see if it contains a special message just for you. Sandus, Sandus, the Ohio, I imagine. And then here, if you want to get a job at Starbucks, they're great. Anybody here ever work at Starbucks? No. So they have uh, great benefits, wonderful work environment. So they have jobs, they have locations we can find, and folks at Starbucks. So this is a very robust page, really good page. So what I thought we'd do is, but I thought it'd be kind of fun, actually, if we were to create a page. So does anybody have an idea for a business? We can't do yours because your company already has one. That you might start, or can you think of any? any this just will be like a pretend page, okay? And any thoughts? Maybe even like dog walking or, you know, I mean, something basic. Your nanny. Let's make a skateboard park. We'll make a skateboard card. Okay. Wow. So here we go. So we go to create, and here's our page. So we're going to have 
most of the time it's going to be a business. So we'll, we'll have a skateboard park that's a business where people have to pay. Is that okay, Lisa? So they're going to pay. We don't know. Maybe it'll be a nonprofit, but we'll make it this way for now. Community. Maybe it'll be a community. Page. Let's do that. So now we'll call it, um, oh, let's just call it UCD Skateboard. So now we have to, you see how easy it is actually to do it. Skateboard Park. And then we got to find a category. Well, we'll just call it Recreation. Recreation spot. That's probably close enough. Just for now. now it needs an address. So we don't have to put a street address in. Let's just say Denver, Colorado, or even a phone number. And then let's say you put in an address, but you don't want to show it. You can hide it in the way you go to it. So now we have our skateboard part. Oh, we need a street address. So what's the address? I think is like 1201 Larimer, something like that. That's the actual address of UCG. Zip code. What's the zip code for this campus? Anybody know? Yeah, 204. Okay. I think we could probably put the zip code there. So now we'll have, um, and just a second or two, we'll, we should have a page because it doesn't take long. So you basically need a name. Okay, so now it's going to start asking you to do stuff. But you might want to be thinking, okay, do I want to use my logo for my new skateboard park? Do I want to use my picture because I'm in charge of it? So we're just going to skip for now. And then here, eventually, you probably have a picture of people having fun at the skateboard park, right? But we aren't sure which picture we want to use. We're just going to skip. And then, now here we have, see how quick that was? Now we have a Facebook page. So then they want us to start inviting our friends. Well, I guess maybe it seems a little premature because we don't really have any information yet. So we're just going to skip that, too. So I'll, I'll show you how to do it here. I think we just skip out of And here is where we'll have to add a button. So maybe we want us to, um, I don't know, text to a certain number. So we could put a phone number in. We could add that. Or maybe a, maybe a website would be better, because our skateboard part does have its own website. So you're getting, and then here's where they think it's already reviews. So you get the idea. Now here is where we would then name it. And this is where maybe there already is somewhere a UCD skateboard park. And this is where it's all going to run together. See, like any URL. And oh my gosh, we got that name. So now we're moving along. So that just, now that's how people can find it. So if you want to, if you go to the page, but you're like, we are not ready for eyeballs on it yet, we're going to go to settings, and then we're going to see where it says page visibility. We're going to unpublish this page because it really is kind of under the radar for now. I mean, it's just not finished. Right? So Facebook is, you know, they're always curious. So um, what do I need additional content? Okay. I think now. So I wanted to show you that to see really anybody can do a Facebook page. I mean, it's not rocket science. So let me show you my Facebook page and walk you through just a few parts of um, what, I mean, what's in the handle? Just some basic things about it. In fact, I just changed it the other day. Oh, this is not going on at all. There's something changing here, and they want to keep telling us that, so I can't get rid of it until after the 29th, I guess. So let's go to the handout. So now we're going to look at uh, Facebook handout. And okay, let's back up a minute, too. Why be on Facebook? I think I talked about living already, and Marie's company, her family with the hormone wear is a great example. Because it's a place where at least some people go and look for wedding attire, plumbers, you name it. People will search Facebook like they might search Google. So that's why it helps have your business on Facebook, like kind of like another website, but would be very interactive. So it's, it needs to make it easy for people to reach you. They couldn't find your number, they didn't put in their contacts. But they, there you are, and they go there, and there's a phone number, an email, so it's easy for them to reach you. You can stay, if you had a business, like we'll go back to Maria's business, then if they have folks, and maybe somebody is married, and two years later their cousin gets married, well, maybe they've gotten to be so close when they got the formal wear, maybe it's just a tux for a prom or something, that they, one of the staff there becomes friends with this girl or guy that got formal wear from them. And they, then they see it, then 
their cousin is looking for formalware, and then that client says, oh, well, I use so-and-so. You should use so-and-so. And then they can actually show a link to your page right into the comment on Facebook. So see, it's really easy then for people to recommend you. Like for me, for example, I know, like Lisa and I have friends. We've been friends on Facebook almost since we met. So like I know when she's family visiting, different things happening. So I'm, just, I'm up to date with her. And that helps me too in terms of all my clients for sure. So we already saw a lot of this when we looked at UCD and Starbucks. But here again is my picture. I use the same picture across the board. So if I had that nice like, like Danielle's picture or Taylor's picture, and you're on, say, Nita, any place that requires some kind of file photo, I would use the same picture so people would go, oh, there's Taylor again, there's Danielle again. That's what I would recommend. And then here, this is where you can kind of get a sort of salesy. So I have the name of my company and basically what I am, a trainer and a tutor. And there's a picture of me doing a training. And that's actually a stock photo behind me on the website lady did. So then going down to my, oh, and here, I have call now. So see, there's different kinds of uh, messages you can have, as we've already seen. So now in the About section, by the way, these tabs will vary, as we've already seen from the other two pages. So now we're um, going to look at the About section. And in the About section, it is basic information about your company. Let me scroll down and then just talk about it. So here, I can actually list up to three categories. Say I also have marketing consultant, and tutor, trainer, only one displays. But where that comes in handy is in a Google search, I mean a Facebook search. So if someone's actually looking for a marketing consultant, theoretically they could be, and then I could come up. And then here I have, see here's my username, luckily it wasn't taken. But I, I mean I've had this page since like 2012. So that helps too, because there could be other people that I know. So then I have, uh, well, right, and this is type, so there's, we go down, let's go down a little bit. It shows my mission to help people of all ages, and especially those 45 and up, but you know, to be more confident in using Facebook and LinkedIn. Productive. Here's all my contacts. So here you have a phone number, that Google Voice number I told you about, my email, my website, and then the about is this little kind of just a thumbnail, very concise description of what the services are, the products you offer through your company. So again, you're looking for search engine optimization, just keywords, phrases, just tucked in there. And uh, so that's, and then there's something called our story, which is sort of like that narrative, that um, summary part of LinkedIn I talked about, where we use Abby's example, how she's interested in mass communication, and, I got involved in it because of this. So the, so it depends if it's a bigger company like Maria's company, it's the story of the company. If it's just you and your company, I love dog, walking dogs, I begged my mom to get a dog when I was six, and then I was always in charge of that dog, and I even walked that dog, and now in college, I have a dog walking service because I found a lot of people are just too busy, especially in downtown Denver where this dog is cooped up in an apartment all day, heaven forbid, no yard for the dog. It makes me feel sad. But at any rate, so then I'll come and walk your dog. So, I don't know, something like that. Just making up. Now, here's an interesting one that was also brought up by people on feedback. Let's say that Abby is helping me with my Facebook business page. So, she's a member of my team. You can get a whole team of people to help you. So, and Abby is cool, she's fine with being connected to my company over on her personal side of Facebook and her personal timeline. I mean, this is, if you know, he's not okay with that, I wouldn't ever pressure her to say, please let me list you. So here's what happens. Let me show you how this is pretty cool. So now we're back over with me. Actually, that picture was taken right out of Metro. Earlier this month, I was at a conference. Looks like it. Someone said, you look 10 years younger in that picture. I don't know, maybe just because I'm in a college classroom. But so watch here, so see, manages Bloomer social media tutors. So that's what I would say on Abby's little, this section right here, right below her picture. Does that make sense then? So um, I'll come back to this in just a little bit. But I wanted to show you how it came So now, you say, okay, Joyce, I've got my page, but how do I get people to even know it exists? How do I get them to like my page, right? Like, how do I get them to follow my Instagram account? Follow me on Twitter. And it's the same concept. 
So let's say you have Facebook friends. I mean, the curious thing for some people is some probably have any friends because they really don't do much with Facebook personally. Maybe like you guys don't at this point anyway. But let's say you do. So here's what you do. See these three little buttons here? I go down to invite my friends. And then I go scrolling down looking for friends of mine on Facebook that haven't already liked my page. And I can go other, I can show you other things to do. But here, like, I just stood in line with her this morning. Catherine, you haven't liked my page? I'm not going to be too hurt. Jessica Smith, my very own cousin, well, she doesn't do that much on Facebook. Then you kind of start into this little self talk, like, don't do that. Lisa shook. So now I invite her. Now, watch this. I can customize this. So maybe I would write a different message to Lisa Shook Downing because I'm in Toastmasters, speaking of leadership group. I'm in Toastmasters with her. Then I would write to my cousin Jessica. So, so you can actually add, get this, when you ask them to like your page, you can also have that message sent over through Messenger. You know, that's the internal messaging system, as you probably know, a Facebook user. So now we're going to send these inbox. But I wanted to show you, because just by serendipity, Somebody asked me to like his Facebook page. So see right here, Steve Rossi invited me to like the Lynn Rome team. That must be his overarching company. So I can just like it right here, or I can decline. And then if I want to know more about the Lynn Rome team, like I want to make sure I'm cool with this. But he cleans up well, he usually looks so much more casual. At <laughs> any rate, so this looks like, you know, when I like Steve, yeah, I'm good with that. I think I like this page. So see how now this actually takes me over to, I want to jump ahead to slide 12 if I may, just because it's easier. Then we'll double back, I promise, to posting. So slide 12. Now let's say that Steve Rossi is my mortgage person. When we refinance our house to get our kids through college, we did that actually, the second kid. So I, he was my mortgage guy, let's just pretend. So I just think the world of Steve. So I think, oh my goodness, this is a great way for me to help Steve out after he helped us so much to get that, that refi, that, that second mortgage. So what I would do, I would go here to following, and I would click on see first. And what does that mean by clicking on see first? That means when I open up my news feed for my Facebook, and there's a post from this Lindrum mortgage team, I'll see that post. So it keeps me very quickly, very easily in the loop with this company. Or another thing I can do, if I'm really keen on this company, is I can go over here to notifications, and I can click on this one, meaning whenever there's a post, they're going to tell me up here in the bell that there is one, but I'm not that interested. You know, kind of making sense to me. But these are things you can do, to, like with a dog walking. Say you had that dog walking business, and you had this customer that, oh my gosh, it's night and day, their dog's so much happier since you've been walking the dog, and now they want to always kind of support you like when you're putting posts up about your dog walking. And you can, you know, the, the idea of tagging, you know, that when we get to the post on, I included that, maybe I didn't, but you know, you put the at sign and then their name, so then maybe uh, when they walk their dog, the thing of their dog and say, oh, so grateful to, you know, Taylor here for walking my dog and then ask the name of your dog walking company. So now you're giving, she's giving nice free PR to your dog walking. So people ask too, like, what should I say, Joyce, on these posts? I think for starters, look at, look at Starbucks. Look at companies that you know are making megabucks and they're, part of the reason they do it is to have your Facebook page. So, okay, okay perfect. So then you want short post, maybe two or three sentences tops. Include those videos like we already talked about, or at least a picture. So all of those will help with what's called your reach. More people will see it. And then you can pay Facebook to boost a post, as some of you may know, um, to create a whole separate ad. And I think you do, you know, right now on Facebook you can't schedule posts, but usually you can, so it's a little tricky right now. And, and you can connect it with Instagram. But I have mixed feelings, because who here is on Instagram? I just want to see where my Instagram people are. Because you know how Instagram is so hashtag heavy, I'll call it, or, you know, it's very important, right? Whereas Facebook has some hashtags, but not as much. So if you have the exact same post, 
the Facebook are people like, what's with all those, especially if they're older like me, all those hashtags? So I don't know. I, I, it, it can work though. You can actually have the same exact post on your page and on your Instagram. Facebook live videos, anybody do those for fun? At least they have. That's like um, you have your mobile device and you start to, instead of having a text video, you have a, you talking into it, like a selfie, but you talking, not just a picture. Or you can interview somebody else and have them talk for like a minute at the most. So it's just kind of like just real. Here we are at the classroom teaching, you know, learning about social media and uh, respond to posts, even the negative ones. Ask people to um, review your page. You know, like Google reviews, Yelp reviews. Heck, when my daughter got married, speaking of formal time, she would not even look at someone that didn't have good reviews on Yelp and Google. She wouldn't even touch it. Not at all. But one more thing I'm going to show you as we're wrapping up, again, just to with many questions. See here? So if you have that dog wagon, so whatever it is, or work at the formal, you can mention it in your intro or your personal side of Facebook. You can include information in your about, and you know, here even. You can even, like, your contact and basic information, you can have websites you have, your meetup, your Instagram account, whatever. So you can add that over to the personal side of Facebook. Any questions, because I know we're getting close to our ending time. That's been very attentive <laughs> and, and kind of like, I want to make sure that you know. I know what else I need to tell you. Okay, so everybody got my business card? I think yeah, I sent that around after this children came in and Nina got it too. So what I offer every group I speak to, you two online people, is 15 minutes of free consultation. So maybe you've heard of Zoom. Zoom is at the Skype, you need the Skype, right? Got married to go to meeting, sort of corporate thing, and then it created Zoom. Zoom is for video conferencing and for sharing screens. So we use it on campus. What's that? We use it on campus. Here's another campus, I'm going to explain it. Thank you, Lisa. So, I can Zoom with you. Seriously, evenings, weekends, typically my best time. And we could troubleshoot anything you get frustrated with, okay? Because I just want to have you be able to feel like I'm an accessible person to you. And no charge, obviously, like that. That's just to help me. You yes. might have already answered, but like if, if we don't obviously have our own businesses for the business, you said you recommend like creating one just with like a school page? Oh, uh, that would be for LinkedIn, not on Facebook. No, 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 okay. 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 no. Wait until no, you actually like have something going yeah. on. Okay. Yeah, okay. I think that would confuse you. Yeah, okay. I just wanted to make no, sure. No, I meant okay. more on LinkedIn because that's who you are. Sure, but you would do a school page, you know, that's good yeah. stuff. Okay, cool. Well, thank you. Thank you.